Welcome to another edition of Classroom Chronicle. I'm your host, Pete Braley. Today, we are at Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School, where today we're meeting Yolanda Dennis. Now, Yolanda is the director, I have to write it down, the director of equity, diversity, inclusion, and family engagement. Thank you for having us. Thank you. I'm looking forward to this Great interview. Great to meet you. I, I've got to say my first question is, what does that title mean? <laughs> what, what do you do? It, it's a loaded title. I, I do a lot of initiatives around diversity, equity, equity and inclusion, and also family engagement. So. Um, I report to the superintendent, um, which is great, and I look, at, I, I look at different policies and procedures as far as making sure that they have inclusive language, um, also work with a, you know, human resources mm -hmm. um, as far as making sure that our policies and procedures are in line um, with our um, environment, school environment, to make sure that we are welcoming and inclusive for students, faculty, and staff. Now this is a new post, right? You've only been, you were telling me it's been a few months. Yes, I'm entering uh, six months here, okay. and I am the first uh, uh, diversity director in the district, so it's very exciting. Wow. Is this something that, that other areas of the country are already doing? Are we just catching up, or, or what, I mean, do, do you have colleagues in other schools around the country? I'm learning that K through 12, the position is popping up. I, I believe it is gaining some speed, but I am still um, one of the few, um, because I've been trying to reach out to, to contact other diversity directors, K through 12, and there is some, um, but not nearly enough, of course. So I'm, ho I'm hoping that I'll be a trailblazer, especially in this area. Um, to encourage other school districts to have uh, diversity directors. But I have to say in higher education, they have um, chief diversity officers, okay. and that is uh, one of the staples at all colleges and universities. So I see it more in higher ed, um, but it is sprinkling down to K through 12, which is exciting. Now you came from higher ed, right? Yes, I, I have over 30 years in higher ed. I worked at uh, UMass Dartmouth for 25 years in different positions. Wow. Um, it was tough to leave. I, I did a lot of different positions there, I received both my degrees there, actually my children also graduated from there so I have a lot of history there um, but it was time to move on and I went to Massasoit Community College as the executive director of diversity and just three four years ago the Board of Trustees um, advanced the position to chief diversity officer um, so I was there for eight years and my official title there was chief diversity officer title nine coordinator affirmative action officer and ADA coordinator <laughs> <laughs> did, you, did you have that on a business card or was it? Couldn't fit at all, um, but it, it, I have to say that it is uh, normal um, as far as chief diversity officers to wear different hats. Mm -hmm. um, but it would be nice to finally shorten it just chief diversity officer, but you, you, it's really important to show your full title. That way faculty, students, and staff will know your role right. on campus. How did you end up here? Did they search after you or did you approach them? or? Uh, actually, I... It just happened to, because the uh, chief diversity officers and diversity directors is a hot position right now, um, sometimes I would get some, um, some consultants that reach out. Um, so I was always, you know, my eyes were open. It was, mm -hmm. it was time for, you know, at, again, after 30 years in higher ed, I said, I'm still on my journey. And, and my journey, I always wanted to get to K through 12 um, somehow. Okay. So, I, you know, I looked for a while. I was not in a rush. Uh, to leave Massachusetts at all, um, but I said that this was a great opportunity. Um, it's in my community. Um, yeah, the commute's better, right? You live in Fairhaven. Yes, yeah. yeah. So it's good. You know, I'm not. I have to say, I'm not missing the commute uh, too much. But it's great to be back in, in my backyard, and I I sit on a num you know a few boards in New Bedford area. So it brought me back to the community, and I'm able to now attend meetings and don't have to rush. So right. um, when I seen this, I just I just had a great feeling about it. It was. It was a perfect fit um, because of aligning my experience with the position here. And really, it's just, it really excited me because, again, I really wanted to get to K through 12. I, I feel as though at the, at the college level, I was seeing students that maybe it was their first exposure to black studies um, or Title IX, which prohibits uh, sexual misconduct. Right. And I said, I want to get to the students before they get to college. And as you know, being that we're a vocational school, not all of our students will go to college. They mm -hmm. will go out in the field. So it's equally important for them to know about the same topics that I want to give all students um, before they get out in the field and to college. I wanted to ask you, like, what are some of the things that you do, if you can tell us, of, of course, you know, protecting everybody's privacy and everything, but 
What are some of the things that you do in this role? Um, well, one of the first things that I st started doing is really highlighting the different months. Um, for example, Black History Month, Women's History Month, and as simply as making, uh, adding it to the morning announcements um, and then making it fun. So for example, for Black History Month, um, we had students um, to, that they submitted, did you know facts? Okay. Um, and they did that, and we had like a raffle. So every morning um, of every day of the month, the st you know, we would pick a student with different uh, a did you know fact. And, they and we had a number of students who participated, um, especially because then we had a, um, a contest at the end that we drew a name, and they won a $50 gift certificate to the den. So what happened is because we had such a great support on that from students, then we extended it to Women's History Month, and we did the same thing. So it's those little things, just more education mm -hmm. around what the months are. Um, and again, always putting out the message that this is a welcoming environment for all. So doing you know some of that. Um, and, and naturally, too, because of my position um, in being a woman of color, person of color, that you know I've had some students. I been involved in some, I want to say complaints or mm -hmm. inquiries um, about treatment. Um, so some students, you know, have sought me out about different issues that they may have had. Um, did Something it, they feel uncomfortable with. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And it didn't, you know, I always have to review that. It does not, it did not rise to a level at all. Um, I believe that what it is is just miscommunication. Um, and also I've seen some faculty and staff that either had some issues or again, they seek me out to say, how can I do, how can I incorporate XYZ into the curriculum? Right. What can I do to have these conversations with students? And that's what really what it is, is just, um, I think right now, I think what has happened nationally is that some, um, some folks will just feel as though I'm not being treated equally. And, and again, that may not, may be the case, it may not be the case, right. but here, my, ex my experience has been, it's just a miscommunication. On that, so again, it's a, just a lot of education. Um, I'm looking at hiring policies and procedures. I work closely with HR, which is great. Okay. And looking at that, um, I know one of the most important tasks that I want to tackle is uh, increasing our faculty of color and staff, but particularly our faculty of color. Mm -hmm. um, doing that, looking into how we can really broaden our job postings um, and how we can. Uh, not only recruit but also retain folks of color here. So um, I know that you know we have to come up with some strategies um, because be being a teacher, you know, you have to take the MTEL, which I'm not used to coming from a higher ed. Oh right, okay. <laughs> so you know, even like I said, seeing how we could support maybe the fees, uh, maybe develop a mentoring uh, program. You know, again, I've been here six months and I have you know a task list um, that I really want to tackle. But you know, there's a lot of work to be done. But I'm I'm just very excited. Um, now I did read that uh, there, there's also been I guess. It's a statewide issue, right, as far as whether or not there are discriminatory issues with who's allowed into the school, and, and is that something that you're also addressing? I'm addressing that, but I have not, to be honest with you, as far as our, you're talking uh, admissions um, yes. policy, yep. you know, we will see that it, it was pretty much completed when I came on, um, okay. but looking at the policies and procedures and, and just seeing the data here, um, I'm not seeing that as far as any discriminatory practices. Mm -hmm. um, I believe that what we changed is really um, like the criteria, the scoring, um, as far as, you know, attendance or, uh, you know, behavioral. Um, so I think, you know, again, just bringing, decreasing the, the points to that because it could be leading to uh, discriminatory against students of color or even our ELL students or students with disabilities. Um, but hopefully we'll find those results out when we get through this recruitment time. Okay. One of the first things I read, in fact, the first time I, I uh, discovered you was an article in the Standard Times about uh, having to do with Ukraine. Mm -hmm. and. In some ways, that's been a very good teaching moment, I guess, for some, especially with, with maybe history and, and whatever courses. But how has the war in Ukraine uh, made its way into Vogue, and, and how, have you, how has your office become involved in that? Right, I have to say, the, what I really do, as far as, it's very important when you're a chief diversity officer or a director of diversity, I'm always watching the news. You have to stay abreast on, on what's going on. Right. And it's really in, important to talk about in school. You know, our staff, our faculty, especially our students, they want to talk about it. When they come here, they want to know what's going on. So I feel as though it's very important to incorporate what's going on, you know, uh, nationally into our classrooms. So Because it, this, excuse me, this okay. generation's probably plugged in more than anyone else. 
right, with the, the social media, they're, they're exposed to the news more than, say, you and I were. Right. And, and that's why I feel as though it's important to talk about it at school because, you know, again, they, they get this all from social media and sometimes what's it called? Fake news, right? Right, right. <laughs> So I, that's why I think it's so important to really um, talk about it, you know, when the students are here into our classrooms because maybe our teachers can talk about what's fake news, you know, and also right. be careful what you're, you know, what you're seeing online. Um, so as far as uh, the war in Ukraine, it was important to have Support Ukraine Day. Um, and that's what we did. And we also we hung the flag out in the Welcome Center. Mm -hmm. And it's just to bring light on what's going on, to show our support. Um, also, again, just explain to the students about it during morning announcements. Um, and also, um, just uh, we're going to be doing a fundraiser pretty soon. Um, I don't have too many details on that, but we plan to um, support an organization partnering with Savers okay. to see how we can raise money, medical supplies um, for support of Ukraine. Right. Um, you know, I did have some uh, conversation um, with, with students and faculty. Um, you know, there was a concern where, you know, should we have, as you know, we have the different flags that's hung. You know, right. should we take down the, the, the Russian flag? The Russian right. flag. And so that was a moment where, you know, I said I had to sit back, think about it, and I said, you know, these flags, first and foremost, is to represent our students, not to represent the countries. The countries. Right. You know, um, because all the, the flags here represented, again, what our students, um, the makeup of our students. Okay. So what I explained to people is these we are to promote a welcoming and an inclusive environment. How, how can we be inclusive if we're taking down a flag? Um, like, right. So again, we have to support our students, even if they're from Russia, again, to support them because... They, we, they didn't call for the war. Exactly. Right. So again, once I explain that, then, you know, oh, okay. And I said, that's that's my job. I always have to take a look at, even, you know, the other side, even if somebody's really passionate about what they believe in. But I'm all... I'm you have here. to remove yourself personally. Yes, right. yes. Definitely right. have to remove myself uh, personally. Everybody has to. Um, so again, I, I, you know, was very proud about that. You know, talked to the superintendent principal about it, and um, again, we have to, uh, again, make sure that we are welcome to all students. Uh, I got to play the devil's advocate, I guess. Mm -hmm. All right, what would you say to someone who is viewing this who says, "That sounds like a waste of money." You know, here we are, babying people. You know, we don't need to get into. What What would you say? Because you know, there are people that think that way. You mean as far not, as not me? <laughs> diversity. Yes, as far as diversity, as far as uh, someone who's here to to look at these issues, uh, whether discriminatory issues or whatever, what do you say to someone who thinks the budget could be better spent? Yeah, I, I say I think we call them the naysayers of okay. this, <laughs> and I'm used to it. You know that it comes with the territory. Um, you know, I do hear some feedback about, you know, why do we need this, you know, critical race theory, you know, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, I believe it's important because what I want to educate folks is when you mention diversity, um, I believe that we just go black black and white, and that's not the case. Right. Diversity is all about uh, ELL students, you know, socially, um, uh, socioeconomic uh, students, you know, disability, LGBTQIA mm -hmm. plus. We, I've been doing a lot of work around that. So it's really educating folks as just, you know, it's not about black and white. It's it's all uh, protected classes, women, um, et cetera. So um, again, it's, it's difficult, um, but I think that that's why it's very important in my platform is how do we have these difficult conversations? And I, I want to really create an environment here, whether it's with the administrative team, um, whether it's with our teachers, again, educating them, how do I talk about race in the classroom? Because again, students will, will bring up different topics, and I know teachers you know, could be either avoided or you know, mm -hmm. feel as though, I don't want this to get out of hand. Um, so again, I feel that you know, I sometimes just have to shrug off the naysayers, and I know that this work um, will not change minds overnight, mm -hmm. um, but it's all about tolerance. Um, um, right. and to, to really communicate and listen um, and have empathy. Have the kids bought in? How, how do the kids respond? Oh, the, the students have been great, actually. Um, I have some um, so students from the student council, also from civic class, that's working with a local artist, um, talking about uh, painting a mural. Mm -hmm. um, in the school, um, and I don't know the details yet. They're still in discussions, but they're actually taking the reins on what they want to see. So it, it will be a diverse um, mural. Um, they also wanted to um, establish like a diversity council, um, the students. So they actually gave you know gave a presentation to myself and other administrators on what they would like to see. 
And what's great about it is that they were mostly seniors, and they're saying, we want to create this legacy when we leave this year, mm. that the other students will also continue with diversity initiatives. Okay. Um, so I try to really be present with student council. I'll be meeting with them, I believe, next week. Um, I want to ask them what they would like to see moving forward. Um, I also already sent out diversity surveys um, to our students, faculty, staff, and families. Um, uh, a couple months ago, and I'm doing a part two um, in the next couple weeks. Um, so that way, I really want to uh, work with from, from the feedback. I want to know what they want to do um, right. as far as faculty and staff and how we can move forward. And you brought up an interesting point uh, that I think we should, we should uh, revisit, and that is being here in a vocational school. Because a lot of these experiences you're, you're describing they're very common in the college atmosphere. Mm -hmm. So especially if you've got people that are going into a trade, this is their first experience, right, with this? Yes. yes. Um, again, what I'm trying to do with my years of experience from, the, from, the, from higher ed mm -hmm. is really I take those ideas and I say, how can I really fit them K through 12? Um, so as far as, and it's been great. I mean, as far as, you know, uh, the CVTE side is new to me as far as, you know, the different shops. Um, but I try to, when it comes down to even, you know, carpentry, you know, how can you incorporate diversity, equity, and inclusion? And, and again, it's just as simple as highlighting, you know, women in the trades. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important when I go visit the different shops, what stands out is when I go to carpentry, it's great to see females in, in carpentry and welding. Right. And I always make sure, you know, ask them, how are you doing? You know, how's, how's the shop? You know, because we don't want any discriminatory practices happening, right? Because sometimes you could say, well, this is male dominated. They're not going to catch on, right. you know, but um, it's... It's been great. Um, even in, it's great to see them in collision, automotive. Um, so it's just those simple things that I try to talk to the to the teachers about as far as how can you incorporate uh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I asked you before we started if you spend time in the classroom, and you also told me that you do a lot of work with uh, what is it, the Google Docs or? Yes, um, actually, uh, Principal Williams uh, created a Google document, um, Google workspace, I want to say, for okay. teachers, with, you know, where we all communicate as far as sharing best practices. Um, and so I said, oh, you know, I, look, I took a look at it. I said, this is a great way to get to teachers. Um, and so I post resources on there um, for our CVTE teachers and academic teachers on various topics. It could be, you know, highlighting various months, LGBTQIA uh, teaching lessons or resources um, for Black History Month. You know, again, lesson plans around that. Um, right now it's Asian American and uh, Jewish American Heritage Month. Okay. I posted um, links to that and resources, how to incorporate uh, lessons into their classrooms. Um, so I try to do that you know, every month whenever I try to see anything that I feel as though teachers could really use in the classroom. I post it and they all get alerts for it. So it's been great. And I also put in there uh, to, to encourage them that if they want me to talk about any of these topics in their classroom, uh, let me know. But so far I was able to visit some classrooms and um, just talk about, you know, one of the classes I visited talked about what did you, what did students do over the pan, you know, over the pandemic when they were home? Um, because I really want students to see, you know, not just see my name or see my emails. I want them to see me. <laughs> right. That way they'll know, you know, connect the name to the face. So I hope, uh, again, going into my, my sixth month and school will be ending. Hopefully uh, next year I'll get into more classrooms. Um, but it's been, it's been great just going to the different shops and going to uh, various classes and working with students. I asked you how the students have received you. How about the teachers? Are they, are they welcoming? Oh, yes. It, it, I would yes. think in some ways it's like, whew, I don't have to deal with this. I've got someone else I can lean and that's on. That's exactly. Right. <laughs> that's exactly what's happening. And but I would I would think also in this society, in the way things are nowadays, that maybe some teachers are nervous about how to present this. You know, oh, I don't want to yes. be called out on the rug, but these are the facts. You yes. know, I feel as though everybody, even sometimes, even with myself, you know, it's you're, you're always careful what you're going to say wrong, or, um, but I always say that if you don't know, you don't know. You just ask questions. Right. You know, we, we're going to make mistakes. You know, like for example, with our LGBTQIA um, uh, society, our folks, that you know, when it comes down to preferred pronouns, you know, uh, some teachers will say, oh, you know, I'm with the preferred pronouns. Say if I, you know, make a mistake. And, right. Um, it's okay. We're all going to make mistakes. You know, I'm still learning in that space. Mm -hmm. um, it's just so, you know, it's just it, all you can do is acknowledge it and move on and try not to make the mistake, mistake again. So 
Um, it's just, it's hurtful when you make the mistake and you don't acknowledge it and you repeat it. Right. Um, so again, this is, you know, there's so many changes now, um, you know, as far as, you know, with our race, disability, what to say, you know, what's, what's the words that we can now use because some words were very offensive right. way back when. Now it's acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just all about educating and just making uh, teachers feel um, that I'm here as a resource. Um, again, if you, you know, need help on how can I talk about this or how can we talk about you know if they show a different video um, so um, it's been great it's been really great and it, like you said it's it's almost as if oh she's here now I can just go to her so uh, <laughs> when I say that I have an open door policy I have an open door policy because they just come through um, and just kind of poke their head and, wow you know what can I do uh, regarding this situation or that right. situation so it's been great and and I and I believe that they like that I'm accessible you know that they right. can always reach me I'm always checking my emails um, because teachers, I mean, I have to say the teachers here are just, you know, one class after another. You know, they're very busy. Yeah. Um, so when they, you know, send me an email, I get right back to them because sometimes things happen in real time and, and you need a response. Mm -hmm. um, but I have to say it's been, um, it's been great here. And what's I, one thing I would like to add is that um, it's very important for a person like myself in this position to have support from the top down. Um, that that is my number one when I accept a position or come on right. uh, to a, a campus is that number one reporting to the top is very important and also getting the support and Superintendent Watson and Principal Williams has been very supportive um, so that makes my job very easy um, so that way it's just I can move forward and, and be the best um, for Volk. All right. Tell me a little bit about yourself before we wrap up. Are you from the area? I am. I actually gradu graduated, I won't say when, way back when, no. <laughs> <laughs> or Rochester Regional okay. uh, High School. Yeah. And then um, moved to New Bedford, um, raised my children in New Bedford. They went through, you know, the public school. They actually were two, they uh, were Volk students and doing very well. Um, and again, they must think it's wild that mom works here. Now. Oh yeah, it's funny. My my son came back. Actually, it was great because my son is a, he's a, a mechanical engineer. Mm -hmm. um, so he came back uh, and he spoke. He came to machine tech here. So when I first came on, he came back and he actually spoke to the students in the shop. He went nice. by. And what's really nice is when students can you know alumni can come back and go right to the shop. They see their teachers. And he really, again, he spoke to the students about the importance of what he learned here, how he went on to college. And, you know, it was great. And he said, thank you. He, you know, he closed the loop because he always wanted to come back and thank his teachers. Oh, okay. And that was, uh, you know, he said, because if it wasn't for machine tech, I probably would have never had my hands-on experience mm. to, you know, go to college um, for engineering. And um, my, son, my daughter attended here. She's in media marketing. So nice. uh, it was great. It's yes. funny because after the interview, I said, oh, I didn't even mention my two kids graduated from me. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it, it's really good. And, and, you know, it's funny when my son did come back, you know, uh, you know, he talked about the flags, how you just feel so good seeing the flags that yeah. it represents. So, um, yeah. Were you always drawn to this uh, profession? Or, I mean, what, what, what did you do? When you were in high school, what did you want to do? Oh, geez. Um, I really didn't know what I wanted to do after Which high school. Which is common. <laughs> but yeah. I did, you know, I, I went into the Army right after uh, I graduated. And, you know, when I was done and, and starting so early um, at UMass Dartmouth and just doing different jobs, um, you know, and landing, I want to say my last nine years was in the Office of Equal Opportunity. Mm -hmm. um, it's not like, you know, you say, oh, I want to be a diversity director because even back then it wasn't really known. It, it was right. really, you to, you know, really handled a lot of uh, complaints on discrimination. It really wasn't getting into the diversity fields. Mm -hmm. So I, I want to say that I really got my feet wet, really, at Massasoit Community College. Okay. Um, and really, you know, um, I was part of the National Association for Diversity Officers in Higher Ed. Um, mm -hmm. So I met a lot of diversity um, directors uh, throughout the country, which is great. And um, that's pretty much where I really took off. And again, right. having the support from the Board of Trustees, um, you know, really looking at really policies and procedures there. Um, I was really heavily um, involved in investigations. And that was really hard because when you're involved with, you know, sexual misconduct investigations, mm -hmm. affirmative action, it kind of takes you away from the diversity piece. I, I said, I can't, it's tough to be both when you're wearing all those right. hats. Right. Um, so. Uh, that's why I really, I said, my, my last journey, I really want to get into the diversity because right now, uh, over the past, you know, few years, it's just, that's what has been the hot topic. 
Um, so I think it's right now it's it's the time for me to, uh, you know, light the torch as far as diversity, and the time is right right now to talk about. I think I think we are all ready to have these difficult discussions. Yeah. What, uh, what would your message be to other school districts that, that don't have this position? I want to say best thing is to be proactive and have a position. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of this position really came out of being reactive. Um, and I want, you know, I always say be proactive and hire a diversity director. Um, you don't want to be reactive. You don't want a racial incident to happen. Or you don't want students to protest saying this is what we want. And that's how the chief diversity officer really started, um, is that students at the college campuses were, you know, demanding to have someone who taught, you know, as far as diversity. Right. Um, and then it was, a re you know, it's reactive. So really be, being proactive. Don't wait until something happens and say, oh, you know, this, you know, this is what you need to do. Because when you have something like that, most likely that um, in the end, if an agency comes in to investigate, you know, one of the things is recommendation recommendation is going to be higher diversity director. Yeah. Um, so I would say again, um, you know, I'm here as a resource. If a district is looking to hire a, a diversity director or put the job description together, feel free, they can contact me and mm -hmm. I'm an advocate. I believe it's needed in all school districts um, because, you know, our faculty staff uh, really need that direction. And we definitely need more faculty no matter where you are of color right. in our classrooms. All right. Is there anything I Forgot to ask you that you'd like to uh, mention. No, I think um, I think it's great. Hats off to Greater New Bedford Volk for having a diversity director. Um, mm -hmm. I just received nothing but pos positive um, feedback um, having this position, and I'm looking forward to continuing working with students, uh, faculty, and staff. It sounds like a rare position, and I'll wrap up with this. I guess it sounds like a rare position because you're covering administrative and the educational. Am I right? Yes. Yes. So um, I wish I could clone myself sometimes <laughs> because there's so much to do. But, you know, again, I, I hope to, you know, this summer do more of the administrative, like, for example, you know, the Title IX policies and procedures. We do have that, but I really want to uh, do more education. So really mm -hmm. what I'm looking forward to do is more diversity training here for our faculty, staff, and students, um, and also Title IX training um, this summer. So it, it's... It, it, it's really wearing those those hats, and what right. we didn't get a chance to discuss is that we just opened up a family engagement center. Oh yes, I did. Um, I did have that written down. Yep, yeah, that we just opened up the center. We just hired two family engagement specialists. So and what does that do? It's really bridging the relationship between families and the school. Okay. To, to help with their child's success in school, so we'll be offering like workshops. Um, on, uh, for example, like uh, resume and cover letter writing for our, for our families, if okay. any of our families are looking for, for jobs in the area. Um, also to, you know, if there's any students that need additional services, whether it's food insecurity um, or even um, any services out in the community, you know, immigration. Some, right. some of our students um, need assistance with that, that we'll send them out for referral. Um, right now, mental health is a, is a big issue on our, you know, at our schools. Right. So we're doing re referrals there, and to assist our families because sometimes families don't know where to go. So we're right. here to really make that bridge. We uh, have been meeting with Yolanda Dennis, who is the director of Equity, Diversity, Inclusion, and Family Engagement here at Greater New Bedford Volk Tech. Yeah. Thank you so much. This Thank was great. You. This was wonderful. Okay. We'll see you again next time for another Classroom Chronicle.